Um, let's just move on. Let's try and enjoy the last week of the season. Let's try and give the fans a, a party atmosphere next week and, and, and try and score some goals and win the match. Uh, it's not very often we haven't scored this year and today was one of them. Next week we've got to be right on the front foot. Hopefully a few of them players who didn't play today will be back available and we will give a good account of ourselves, I'm sure. So it comes down to this, folks. The final game of the season. And guess what? The title's still up for grabs. Blackburn Rovers entertain Oxford United. Talk about that match and more today's show. That's right, folks. Back once again with another match preview. In fact, it's the final match preview of the season. And who the better to end it with a matchup against Oxford United. Now, if you are new to the channel, why the heck are you new? But if you are new, hit the subscribe button. I'll keep your bang up to date. We're all things Blackburn Rovers moving forward. And despite this being the final match of the season, there is a lot of uh, Blackburn Rovers content still to come on this channel. And I'll talk more about that later. Anyway, the match will take place on Saturday the 5th of May 2018 at Ewood Park. And last season, Oxford United finished 8th in the division. They are currently find themselves in 14th. A win for Oxford, and they could go as high as, well, 13th, to be honest with you. Um, they're currently managed by Carl Robinson, and the fact they've had a couple of managers this season, Michael Apperton, ex-Rover managers there, and Pep Clotet. Uh, but Carl Robinson will end the season in charge, and the current top goal scorer is Wes Thomas with 10 goals, and I just found out that he's going to be released by the club at the end of the season. Anyway, over the years, the two sides have met 27 times in all competitions. Blackburn Rovers winning 10 of them. Uh, Oxford United winning 7. And the two sides have to, drawn 10 between them. And in fact, in the return leg of this fixture, way back when, at the Kazam Stadium, Blackburn Rovers winning 4-2 uh, on the night. And a certain Jack Payne was actually on the score sheet for Oxford United in that match. Anyway, over the years, the two sides have met a few times at Ewood Park, and these are the last five results. Last time out was all the way back in 1992, ended up with a 1-1 draw, and that was back in League Division 2 before Blackburn made it into the Premier League. And at the top of the shop there, 1987, was the full Members' Cup, Blackburn Rovers winning 4-3, and that was back in the 20th of January 1987. Below that, 1989, another big win for Rovers, 3-1 winners, again, back in the old Division 2, that was on February 21st, 1989. The last time Oxford United did beat Blackburn at Ewood Park was back in December 29th, 1990. Three one winners. Now, let's take a look at my starting 11 first and foremost for the host, Blackburn Rovers. Now, Mowbray made wholesale changes last time out, and I expect him to do the same. Obviously, he did mention some players might make a return to the squad for the final game of the season. But here we are. Here's my start 11. Lautweiler in goal. Lenhan, Downing, Mulgrew, and Bell. With Bennett and Evans operating in the defensive midfield sort of uh, setup. Armstrong, Antonson, and Payne. The three low knees in the middle of the park. The creative outlook. And Dominic Samuel, last chance saloon for me. Uh, up front. Let's take a look at the statistics. Bradley Dack, no more goals for him this season. He'll end it on 19 goals because he's not going to feature in this game. Uh, Danny Graham will probably be on the bench, so he might have a chance to add to his tally of 17 goals. Charlie Mulgrew still sniffing on the door, trying to maybe get 15 for the season. He currently finds himself in third place with 14 goals. As for Adam Armstrong, fourth place, nine goals for the season. As for the discipline, Smallwoods, top of the pops there with 11 yellows. Bennett has eight, Evans has eight, Williams has seven. As for the Reds, Elliot Bennett tops the pops, doesn't really want to be, but he has two reds to his name. Samuel has one. Lewis Travis has one. In fact, if we go back to the, uh, the starting 11, I th I'd like to see Travis in there somewhere, maybe in place of Bennett, and Bennett can come off the bench. But uh, but anyway, moving on to the last five results for Rovers. They look like this last time out. It was that oh, frustrating defeat, I would, I would say. You know, all in all, I'm not too bothered about it, but consi considering the results... Uh, for Wigan, it would have given us the opportunity to um, actually, what would they, it would, would it put us on level points with them? If we had won, we would be on 96 points. No, we would have we would have been in front and had the possibility of a league title uh, decider this weekend. But anyway, it's it's the way it is. Who cares? We're actually promoted. And before that, 24th of April was that special night at the Keepmount Stadium. Blackman Rovers 1-0 winners. Uh, thanks to that Charlie Mulgrew floating header that sealed the deal. All the way back 19th of April, we beat Peterborough at Ewood Park. That was our last match at home. Uh, can we equal that fixture or equal that result 
uh, with a couple of goals maybe. Uh, all the way back, 14th of April, we were drawn 1-1 against Bristol Rovers at the Memorial Stadium. And all the way back, Tuesday the 10th of April, nil nil draw up against Gillingham. So when you look at it, when you look at it on paper, we've only got two wins out of the last five. So not the greatest form, but who cares? We're promoted. Anyway, let's take a look at our visitors. This is how I think they will line up. With uh, ex-Rovers goalkeeper Eastwood in goal, Kane, Dickey, Mosinho, Ruffles, Brannigan, Ledson, Rockwell, Mowat, Avika, and Thomas, like I said, just been or will be released at the end of the season. His contract will be coming to an end. Is he worth a punch for Rovers? Probably not. Anyway, let's take a look at the top goal scorers. Well, according to this, Henry tops the goal scorers with 11 goals. Thomas there in 11. Obika with 7 and Rothwell with 6 as for yellows. Ledson has uh, 13. Mustinho has 7. Ricardinho has 7. Carroll has 7. As for reds, Ricardinho and Mowat both have a red to their name. As for the last five results, they look like this. Not, not too shabby, not too shabby. Uh, Oxford United last m result was a 2-1 win up against Strugglers Rochdale, who are still scrapping at the bottom of the table. Uh, before that, they beat Doncaster Rovers 1-0, just like what we did. Uh, all the way back, 17th of April, they were beaten by Wigan Athletic at home. Uh, before, well, Wigan were at home, sorry. All the way back, 14th of April, at the Kazam, Oxford, 2-0 winners over South End. And all the way back, 10th of April, uh, Fleetwood beat Oxford United uh, at their own gaff. So the story is set. Blackburn Rovers, if you beat Oxford United this weekend, you have a small chance of taking that crown, the number one spot anyway, from under the noses of Paul Cook, Nick Powell, w Will Gregg, and Wigan Athletic. Let's try and make that happen. Let's do our bit anyway, and let's hope Doncaster Rovers can upset the odds and beat Wigan uh, at the keep mode. Is that the keep mode? So we've got to bear that in mind. Um... But yeah, it's, uh, it's all to do, all to play for. Let's see what happens this weekend. So you heard a little bit of what I've had to say about this match. What did the gap have to say shortly after the final whistle between Charlton Athletic and Blackburn Rovers in an extended Talking Heads? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I think um, obviously their goal highlighted that. I think a stone wall sending off when Samuel's running through first half. And it's a pretty decent opportunity second half that um, we didn't take. Um, yeah, so sum it up, it just wasn't to be, and maybe some different personnel, a little bit more quality. The people that have, have won us football matches all year uh, on the pitch might have made the difference, but um, so the team worked really hard. I thought second half we had a real go and showed our spirit, our true spirit, and uh, it just wasn't to be today. I thought we just played a bit too slow. I think, I think the system we chose to play today, because mainly because of the personnel. Um, should have been able to give them lots of problems, to be honest, but we moved the ball a little bit too slow. We weren't brave enough to play. Um, you know, we, we tried to adjust a few things at, at the start of the second half, but uh, the longer it went on, the more we got into the fluency of it and played more on the front foot like we normally do. And um, it's gone now, it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's, it's football. It's, um, they deserve credit for sticking in and giving it their best shot today. And, and yet, um, I didn't, I didn't think we got any, not that you look for help, but any decisions, it was a strange day, you know, I was really infuriated with the official for most of the game, but um, I don't want to stand here and blame him for the result, it's, you know, we have to take our chances when they come along and we didn't today. Listen, too much of the whistle I would suggest, you know, he's a, he's a lovely specimen of a man, wasn't he, lovely muscles and um, goodness me, it, it felt a little bit like it was all about him today, it's really... A shame because you know they you could see they were playing with intensity they had a bit of nervous edge about them and because um, they needed to try and win that game and they felt it in that last 20 minutes it was you know they were desperately hanging on really but um that's okay that's we, we are disappointed because we, we, we took a lot of pride in the fact we'd only lost one in 33 games we've now lost another one so never mind we uh, finish the season off next week at home and um let's hope we have a good day i think the game was there to win to be honest i think um you know, I try to be honest with us, with the supporters. I think it's, uh, it was there for us. It didn't break. We probably didn't need that goal, and then we'd have like, it would, I would like to think it would have been a cavalry charge to to, to, to win the foot match. But um, never mind. Listen, it, it's okay. You, we, it's, football is a is a you know professional sport. They're they're trying their best to, to stop us winning. We uh, I thought we had a real goal second half. As I say, I was a bit frustrated at half time that we weren't brave enough to to play. A more aggressive sort of game against them, and I think um, what, you know, 
because I don't want to stand here and make excuses. It, it is what it was. We lost one nil. You lose, you do lose football matches sometimes. Uh, it wasn't through a lack of desire or effort or drive. Uh, it just didn't go away today. So everybody seems to be wanting to uh, win the league. And uh, as the manager of the club, I just wanted to get out of the division. But, um, the history books will show finishes top. You know, I, I don't even know where their last game is. I'm not really interested, to be honest. It's um, we're disappointed we didn't win. Um, it was there for us to win today, and we didn't take the chance. We had a lot of players unavailable that normally make a difference in our team. If you think of the drive that Elliot Bennett normally gives our team, was unavailable today. Derek Williams played just about every game, without even mentioning Bradley Dacker, was a game changer for us. And so there's some massive players not available today. But the team still stuck at it, showed their spirit, it wasn't to be, and uh, we move on to next week. The last week of the season, when it's already done, is, uh, is, um, is sometimes a bit difficult to keep their focus, keep their concentration. Um, we will get through the week, there's lots of things to do this week, there's lots of events to attend, there's lots of um, things the players have to, have to do this week. So um, I would just like to you know, put on record how proud I am of all of them, uh, for their work rate, their, their concentration, their desire not to lose games all season and yet of course we've lost today and we're disappointed but let's not make a big thing of it they've done the job they were asked to do this year it would be nice to win next week and it would be nice if if, if our rival for the title didn't win but um, it doesn't matter if, if it doesn't work out we, we're promoting that's all that matters the fixtures will come out at the end of June and, and we'll be looking at championship fixtures I think so I think it's important the players and the supporters of the club have a connection and they know that the players are, you know, win, lose or draw, they are giving everything. And, um, and teams can't play great every game. You know, sometimes it doesn't quite go. I think the referees spoiled the fluency of the game today. I think there's so many stoppages, it was ridiculous. There was some really strange decisions. But um, as I say, I don't want to really stand here and blame the referee for a 1 0 defeat. I mean, we had some real opportunities to score a goal today and we didn't stick them in the back of their net. And so. Um, Let's just move on. Let's try and enjoy the last week of the season. Let's try and give the fans a, a party atmosphere next week and, and, and try and score some goals and win the match. Uh, it's not very often we haven't scored this year and today was one of them. Next week we've got to be right on the front foot. Hopefully a few of them players who didn't play today will be back available and we will give a good account of ourselves, I'm sure. You've heard a little bit of what the gaffers had to say about the match and you've heard a little bit of what I've had to say about the match. What have the fans been saying on social media? Well, to be honest with you, not much, but over on the BRFCS forum, there's a lot of discussion going on about the Oxford game. Anyway, first and foremost, let's take a look at a, uh, a visitor's comment, Oxford South Saxon. Good evening, fellow, following our debacle of a season under Pep Quartet with this band of foreign mercenaries. Carl Robinson has a stable with biggish plans under new Thai owner. We are looking forward to our trip north and look like bringing upwards of 1,500. It will be an interesting game with us having a fully fit squad for the first time all season. And with players like Ledson likely to move to your near neighbours, Preston, it will be the last time we uh, get to see him play. Got to meet some good people when you played us in the Cup at Grenoble Road who were a little uncertain the way things were going to go for you. It's great for you, uh, you guys are heading up with your stadium, fan base, etc. Any information on pubs, parking, best way to get to the ground directions wise would be helpful. Here's to a good game. Now, if you are going to the game and you want to give Oxen South Saxon any points of wisdom, make sure you mention them in the comment section below. Meanwhile, Binjay17. Now, he has uh, purchased some advertising space here because look at the state of this comment. Uh, should change the title to Final Open uh, game plus promotion and possibly title celebration. I know people don't understand my mentality about not promoting the opposition, but surely this is an exception. This day is all about Blackburn Rovers. There hasn't been a time all season where the opposition has mattered less, excluding Charlton, given the travel and all. See people complaining about some fans being selfish by running on the pitch. Given Mowbray requested they remain in the stands, it did seem somewhat disrespectful, but football fans and selfishness go hand in hand. Rovers fans certainly aren't immune to it. If you ignore this post, those who complain are being just as selfish as them. After all, it's all about the same thing. Celebration. Who cares about Oxford apart from some people who are 50 plus year grudge? Also, I said maybe people need to tone down on the happiness a little bit, even if it's just to keep the club on their toes. I get the impression that people like Anderson, Agnew, etc. will take this club for a ride again at some point because the fans simply don't have the ability to stay on guard. Maybe people don't want to spend time policing a football club 24-7, but a little bit of perspective is needed. 
People in the past coming out with stuff like Family Club and such, but the Sharks will see that as a weakness. The club needs to be harder edged in the long run. Maybe for one day people can just try to enjoy it, but this summer people can't just coast off this good feeling without at least calling the owners out a little bit. Already there's a belief that the manager's going to have to be have to plead for a bit of decent budget in the summer. Do people want another temporary setback in 12 months? Look at Bolton, the club who finished second last season. Even look at Wigan, who have just had their second promotion from League One in three seasons. Do you want to get promoted from League One again in 2020? For many, the motto is Arte Labor. It's consistently promoted. Think big as being on the same level. And recent years, I've added a third. Dempe ad squadre vergelente. Now that uh, we'll have to do some uh, translating because my Latin is shameful. Meanwhile, Goga said this, Man, I wish I had an opportunity to, to attend. Kind of been a tradition for me to travel to the last home game of the season. Uh, some good memories from those matches. Two guys last match, all-time favourite player. Stands out in the most memorable reel, Goosebumps. Wigan, when we went down with the, the opposite, still can't believe someone got a chicken inside the stadium. Is there still a supports cup at the end of the season? I would go with Lightweiler, Raya are fit. Bennett, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Williams if fit. Harsh to bench him. Not my favourite, but steady as a rock this season. Travis, Smallwood, Samuel, Payne, Dak, if fit. Armstrong, Graham, not all when the usual 65-minute sub comes. Hopefully a sunny day and Rovers win to round off the season. Not many could have predicted such uh, after such an awful start to the season. Indeed, Darren Rover. Sadly, I can't be there on Saturday because I couldn't delay going back to France any longer. We're all Rovers together in reality with divergent views, but that's life. The biggest thing that Toby Murray has achieved is reinvigorating this club of ours. Onwards and hopefully upwards. Enjoy the day and give them a shout for me. We're on our way. We're on our way. As for FGS 5635, I quite enjoyed no crowds at Ewood, no trouble parking, no queue in the chippy and no traffic on the way home. Down with all these extra fans. On a serious note, it'd be great if we could put together a really good performance. We could go a long way to enticing a few back next year if the players can put on a show on Saturday. It would be a real good time to give someone a hiding for the first time this season. Come on, you blues. Meanwhile, Big Dog Steel's gone for this. Raya, Travis, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Bell, Smallwood, Whittingham, Bennett, Payne, Armstrong and Graham. I'm torn between Whittingham and Tomlinson, but went for experience. You know, to be honest with you, I'd like to see Tomlinson get given a go. Travis, Tomlinson, uh, Michael Moles, uh, maybe some of the other ones, Butterworth, uh, whatever. Just give them, maybe all chuck a, a, a sub bench full of youngsters, give them a day out at Ewood Park, uh, and maybe give the fans a little, little glimpse as to what they're missing in the under-23s. Ben H. Ben said, this got a sneaky feeling the title, sh title isn't done and dusted. I think we'll win this, and Wigan haven't been setting the world alight lately with an away trip to finish. Big crowd and a 3-1 win for Rovers. Let's see what Wigan do. Raya, Travis, Lenahan, Mulgrew, Bell, Bennett, Whittingham, Smallwood, Payne, Armstrong, and Graham. Simon Garner's 194. Great to see. Going to be a smashing day with celebrations planned. What have the fans have had to say? You've heard what the gaffers had to say. You've heard a little bit what I've had to say. Well, none of that matters whatsoever. What really matters is what Caster Cat thinks will happen between Blackburn Rovers and Oxford United. <laughs> today folks if you've enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you are new to the channel hit the subscribe button it'll keep you bang up to date with all things blackburn rovers i'm also on twitter and facebook so please check me out on those little bad boys links to that descriptions in the description below also just want to let you know some of the content that will be coming uh in the next few weeks even when the season comes to an end uh we'll be doing end of season awards that'll be blackburn rovers season end of season awards my own special opinions about certain players certain performances that kind of deal then we have the 2017 2018 season review that'll be a special bumper episode of uh, a show just like this but talking about some of the high and low points uh this season then i'll go through the 2017 2018 individual player reviews basically i'll be doing a video on each player they'll be short and sweet probably less than five minutes long so please check them out we'll be reviewing the likes of joe nuttall and also bradley dack of course and then we'll have the 2017 2018 buy keep or sell video that'll be looking at the current squad see which players we want to keep see which ones we want to get rid of and maybe chuck in a few suggestions of players that we want to bring in 
Then we'll have the 2018-2019 uh, League Predictions. That's right, the Championship, baby. We're back in the Championship. And I'll have a very, very early uh, League Prediction of where we're going to finish amongst others. So then it's my Blackburn Rovers Seas 2017-2018 Football Manager Specials. We're going to recreate the season, but with the previous past eight or nine managers. That's right, we're going to simulate the season with big Roy Hodgson in charge. We're going to recreate the season with Mark Hughes, Paul Lintz, even the dreaded Steve Keane. Luna wants in on the action. And then finally, I'll do my very own Blackburn Rovers uh, Football Manager 18 game save while I'll try and recreate the season with my own managerial skills. See if I can copy what Tony Mowbray's done and get us back into the championship. But the first time of asking and also maybe just maybe kick on and uh, continue the game into the Premier League. Uh, but all that's going to happen over the next uh, couple of months, maybe towards the start of the championship season in August. So plenty of more content to come or come in the next few weeks. Also, there is going to be, in amongst all this, uh, some World Cup content. And actually, that does get a little bit fruity, so uh, make sure you stick around for that. But anyway, that's all I've got for you today, folks. If you've enjoyed this video, thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button. Until next time, thumbs up, subscribe. Ciao for now. Thanks again for watching. Please like, share, and most importantly, hit that subscribe button. It'll keep you bang up to date with all things Blackburn Rovers. But if you want to check out something completely different, head over to my other YouTube channel. You do that by pressing the button right there. If you want to check me out on Twitter, Facebook, details are in the description below. So until next time, thumbs up, subscribe.